Hello folks, welcome to a new Time Games Lab tutorial. In this tutorial we're gonna see uh, how I made some sliding menus that I find that are really cool. So the objectives for this session are to have a basic understanding of twins and to create an awesome menu effect. So without further ado, what is a twin? So if you take a look at the left graph, when I have my Y position changing within time without a twin, uh, it will change linearly. When I use a twin or an easing, uh, it means that it will gradually start accelerating and the accelerating depending on the twin you're using and this makes things more fluid. You can take a look below and you can see that the top ball is moving linearly while the bottom ball is moving with an easing, uh, quadratic easing. So with this you can see that it's more natural movement and this is something that we're going to use uh, within our tutorial to try to give the menu effect a little bit more easiness. So this is done actually through a formula and I put the formula here in the screen for you guys to look uh, which take four parameters, the current time or the current step, the starting value the change in value that you want to achieve, so let's say the Y position is the start value and the Y plus 100 200 pixels is the change in value, maybe and the duration of the effect so with this, you can use this in your step event and calculate everything you need to so for our menu, what we're going to do, we're going to get rid of the usual menu layout that people have that is one menu per room and then you switch rooms around to switch menus and what we're going to actually do is we're going to take all our four menus in this case and we're going to stack them, stack them up, no? so this would be the idea we're going to stack them up in only one single room and we're going to use our view to move around between menus so we're going to add a little uh, buttons to the side so we can easily move around and this is what our view are go is going to look like so when I move around what I'm actually doing I'm just switching my view and sliding it down or up and this will give us the effect of moving between menus and for a button just so when we get there it's easier for you guys to see what we're going to do is each button is composed of a rectangle this is a, a filled rectangle with a solid color a sprite that I have done it beforehand and a little gradient effect to the side just to give a little bit of depth in relation to the actual game menus so that's it and let's head to game maker okay now that we're in game maker I'm going to add all my sprites so I made a play sprite and then I made also a high score sprite and let's add the third one it's going to be a shopping cart and the fourth is going to be our configuration menu sprites simple sprites on a transparent background I'm going to create my room and I'm going to switch it to 405 by 720 in height that's going to be also my viewport size so I'm switching the enable user views and visible when room starts and switching everything to 405 by 720 and my first object that I'm going to add is my object, object menu so uh, I'm going to add one for each menu that I have and on the create code it's gonna, I'm going to set the X, X and y, y position so that's my position in relation to the screen I'm going to set my background color for my rectangle for this menu button and in this case it's going to be a red color and I'm going to set my sprite to sprite 1, that's the play button okay and I'm going to do now I'm going to use a parent object to do all the rest of the code so I have four menus objects and I'm gonna have one parent that does all the rest of the code as a step in and drawing and all that so first of all I'm gonna use my scale I'm gonna set the scale to 0 0.9 because I have a little bit of big sprite and whenever my mouse is within my button size I'm gonna scale it up back to 1 to give it a hover effect so 
I'm just checking for my position, my mouse position in relation to my X and X plus 90 and my Y and Y plus 90. And this will be the size of our button in the screen. So when I'm hovering, this scale is going to be equal to 1. And now I'm going to check when I'm pressing the button. So if I'm pressing the left mouse button, then it means that I'm clicking this button and then we're going to add the code later to this session. So that's basically for the hover effect. And then I'm going to update my button position always in relation to my view. So my little left side menu stays in place. So I'm just using X and Y. Although I'm just moving the X position, I'm doing in the Y position, I'm doing the X also. Uh, then on my draw event, I'm going to draw my button as we saw. And you can see on the screen now. The idea is that I'm going to draw first a rectangle of my color. So when I switch my color variable, it will switch the rectangle color. Then I'm going to draw my sprite center to this rectangle. So I'm going to draw a sprite extension so I can use the scale. And I'm going to draw my sprite at x plus 45, 90, y plus 90 pixels with x scale and x scale on the x and y axis. And then I'm going to draw my shadow. To do that, I'm going to use color blend. So first I'm going to use a subtract blend mode. So I'm setting that up. And then I'm going to draw a rectangle color, which will be our gradient. Due to the way that gradient works, uh, the blend mode works in Game Maker, it's actually going to be an inverted gradient. So I'm going to start it just at the left side of my, sp my position. So X plus 75 and Y plus 90. And what I'm doing is I'm going from a really dark color that's RGB 30, 30, to black. With that, I can add this object to my room and test it out. Let's see. And okay, we got nothing because I okay, the object is added. Let's check. I have everything set here. Okay. And my parent menu, it has a draw event. Draw event is fine. I have set my blending mode back to normal also. No sprite, okay. And let me think. Okay, I know what happens. I forgot to set the parent, so it has no, this object has no drawing in our step code. So let's try it again. And there you go. You can see that this nice hover effect works. So I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to call it object menu 2, 3, and 4. And then we just have to switch around the creation code for our new color and new sprite. And, oops, okay, there you go. Object menu 4. That looks good. So menu 2, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my Y position to 180. So it starts a little bit lower. And then I'm going to switch my color to 102, 51, and 153. That's my purple color. And I forgot my sprite. Let me go back. Okay. And switch off the sprite to 2. There you go. So I'll do the same thing with menu 3 and 4. So starting at 180 times 2. And 68, 108, 179. That's my blue color and sprite 3. And let's grab, let's go down to menu 4, and that's going to be 180 times 3. My color is going to be 248, 148, 6. That's my orange color, and sprite 4. With this, I should have all the menus ready. So I'm going to add all of them to the room, and let's test it out again. And hopefully it will work this time. And it does. There, you see. So everything is set up on the left side. And now we're going to have to set up our background and our room to move around. So I made a new object. It's called Object Menu. On the creation event, let's add some code to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is set my initial twin variables. So I can start twinning around when I'm moving. So I'm going to set my timer to minus one. 
my start to zero, my target to zero, and my C to zero. So timer at minus one, this will be when we start the effect. I set timer to zero and then run. So I'm gonna first check if the timer, timer is running. So if timer is more than or equal to zero, that's when our effect is running. So the first thing we're gonna do is check if we reach the end of the tween. That means if our target has been reached. So if our Y position is equal to our target, we're gonna go to the else. But if not, it means we have not reached the end of the tween. So I'm gonna add to my timer, timer equals my old timer plus one. My C is gonna be my target minus my start, my duration of 20. I'm gonna add T equals timer. And then I'm gonna start copying the code that I showed you guys in the beginning. So T is equal divided by my full time divided by two. And then I have this if and else statement to see if I have reached the middle of the transition or not. So this is, I'm just adding the this code that is Y is gonna equal to this bunch of stuff that actually is our transition curves. So on my else statement, if I have reached my target, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set my start position to my target position and I'm gonna set my timer back to minus one and with this, the time should stop. I'm also going to update my X view and Y view positions to my X and Y position of this object. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a draw begin to draw my background colors on the screen so you can actually see we're moving around. So what I'm doing, I'm basically drawing uh, four rectangles of the size of the room one on top of each other so that gives us the menu effect the stacked up menu effect so i'm going to start with the red color i'm drawing my rectangle uh, from 00 to 405720 and i'm going to switch to my purple color purple color so that's 102 51 153 and i'm going to switch the start to 720 and my end to 720 plus times two then my third background color is going to to be blue and this is going to be 68 108 179 and okay so this is 72 20 times 2 and 720 times 3 on my web positions and my orange color is going to be my fourth color that's going to be 248 148 6 and that's 720 times 3 and 720 times 4 okay so with this i should have everything working I'm just gonna switch things around so I have my proper menus being created at the right times. And I'm gonna use, now I'm gonna set up my click event. So when I'm clicking uh, the menu, what will happen is I'm gonna set my target to my YY position times four, my timer to zero, and my menu starts position to my menu Y position. So that updates when I'm actually moving around. And I'm gonna add this to my screen and let's check what happens. Okay, so <laughs> it did not, whoa, it did not work at all as I expected. Let's take a look what's happening. Okay, the code looks good. I'm gonna put up the code in here just so we can take a look at what is going on. Okay, I found out. I forgot to set my t to minus equal to. And this should make it work. Let's take a look. And it is. You can see that it's actually working. I can move around between menus. That's perfect. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add some sprites that I have created just to give us a little effect. So I'm going to call them sprite dummy one two three and four and this is going to be just some uh, nice uh, background images so that's going to be my first menu second menu and add the sprite dummy three my third menu and my fourth or last menu there you go and i'm going to create one object for each of these dummy sprites again this is how you're going to go and set up our all your menu objects and all that so just so you can see how i'm doing this is how you should do to set up everything inside each one of the menus 
So I'm just adding these four sprites to these four objects. Then I'm going to go to my room. Sorry. And I'm setting up my height of my room to 720 times 4. So you can see I have my room going. It's very narrow and uh, I cannot actually see what's going on. So what I did is I'm adding up a background image that is actually just a blank state of how my menu will look like afterwards just so I can see and I can have this feeling of where I should add things. So I'm going to start with my menu tutorial. Let me just shrink it a little bit and there you go. So for my second menu I'm going to add my second dummy image. There you go. Uh, center it out. Okay, looks good. And let's go to the third one. Okay, looks good right here, sorry. And to the fourth one, I did the same thing. Okay, so I'm gonna switch it off now, draw the background, and let's test it out. And there we go. So this is our menu with the background images. Again, these objects that have made this background images can be actually your buttons, your menu options and all that, our information. So I believe that's it. If you guys liked it, please hit that like button. If you want to subscribe to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when I publish new videos, please click on that bell button. Thank you very much for watching and see you next.